everybody. Welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. We are in part three on um, talking to Hillary Barrett about her book, I Ching, Walking Your Path and Creating Your Future. So we were talking about in the first side an, an introduction to the I Ching, um, how you may use it, its background. Um, in the second segment, we talked about actually doing a coin toss as a way of doing a divination for yourself. And um, we looked at my actual coin toss for, for myself and the hexagrams that they convert to. And so um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, first, generally speaking, you know, how, what do you do now you've actually got these results? Um, how do, what, what's your next step in terms of interpreting the results? Um. Right. Well, assuming you've looked them up in the book and you know what hexagrams you've got and what they're called, the first thing I like to do is put the two hexagrams together okay. um, and try to imagine, you know, sort of like putting up an old fashioned tent. Um, these are the two poles that, and we're, we're going to hang the frame from this. Mm. So how do they how do they relate? Um, so we said your first hexagram, the the things you need to know are about integrity and modesty and how that shows up. Mm -hmm. And this fits into a context of gradual development, which is about growth and coming home. It has this lovely imagery of marriage, of marrying into something. Mm. Um, yes, it says, um, yeah, I suppose the very, very first thing you do is read what it says. Right. So I got, so I looked and went into your book. So this is um, hexagram 15, which was my first mm -hmm. one. And so there's this kind of executive summary, integrity, which we mentioned in the yeah. previous segment. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when, then when I, I, yeah, when, when I say read what it says, I literally mean read what it says. Um, and what you can see there, there's just a little tiny bit of text that's in italics mm -hmm. and every, everything else is in plain text. And the little tiny bit in italics is what the Oracle says. Everything okay. else is what the is what the commentator says about it. Um, in this in this case, what I said about it, and okay. that's that's optional. Um, okay. What the oracle says to you, you, know, you asked. Let's see what was the question you asked exactly. Um, right. What what additional things do I need to know about my soul's mission or purpose? Right. Yeah. yeah. And the oracle says integrity creates success. The noble one completes it. Right. So you're going, so your book, just to, for people who are, from, who are not familiar with the book, this is what I love about this book is that it's very short, concise, and I can carry it and, you know, and carry it around. Mm -hmm. So the first part is key questions. What is the simple reality? How might you return to a state of balance? What if I didn't depend on you? What are, who are these key questions? I'm, is this my questions to myself or who am I? asking these questions the, of these are, these are questions that you might imagine the oracle is asking you ah um, okay got it so if i were having mm. a conversation and all of a sudden the book were talking to me it would be asking it might be asking questions. that yeah <laughs> okay got it <laughs> mm -hmm. and then in the oracle you actually have you mentioned in um in italics kind of like the executive summary of of integrity creates success noble one completes it and then you actually have your personal interpretation below mm. it Yes. And is this personal interpretation based on your own um, sense of your conversations and other people's conversations? How did you come up with this? Um, it's a mixture. I mean, okay. It's partly going to the Chinese text and trying to understand what that is saying. Mm -hmm. It's um, partly looking at the tradition of how people have understood it. It's partly looking at um, structures and relationships inside inside the book, because you know it's not just words; it's also those diagrams, the lines that we were talking about, and the mm -hmm. relationships and contrasts and resonances between them. Mm. Um, and so, from all those things, um, especially the structures, you can kind of build up theories and ideas in your head of what these things might mean, what it maybe ought to mean. Um, and what I did was take all that and then go to my experience of readings, which at the time was about a, a decade's experience of reading for lots of different people, um, and say, okay, if I'd had this idea and applied it to this reading, would it actually have helped? Would it have helped the person? Would it have made sense? Mm. And so 
everything in the book, you know, the, the ideas go through that test of would this actually have worked in practice? And was this actually what it, it was saying then? <laughs> okay, and then in, and below it, you have an image. So what is this image you're referring to? Yes, um, that's um, a part of the oracle that was written later by a few centuries later by different authors. Mm -hmm. um, you need to go down a bit for the image. There you go. Um, and that is describing the trigrams and the picture that the tri the two okay, trigrams. This, is, this the, that, is this the picture? picture is this picture the one that you're referring to? The image of this um, picture? Uh, no, I'm referring to the picture you can imagine by thinking about the two trigrams. Ah, uh, I see. Got it. Okay, got it. So if you were looking at this picture of these two That's trigrams, the what can That's I imagine that means? Ah, okay, yes. got it. Just okay. what can you what can you imagine it looks like? Um, the lower trigram is mountain, um, and the upper trigram is earth, um, and you know. So there's a mountain under the earth. Yeah. Which is, you know, which seems odd. Um, how can there be a mountain under the earth? Mm -hmm. um, and I sat, I, when I sat and imagined that, what I thought of was there can be bedrock under the earth. Mm -hmm. You know, if you go down far enough through the soil, you find rock. It's as if there's a whole mountain down there under your feet. Mm -hmm. um, and so I imagine hexagram 15 as a picture of bedrock um and the soil above it that's you know created by its erosion mm. um, and the fact that there is something very solid down there mm. um well you can't see it um. okay and then you talked about the relationships of that hexagram and there's different relationships right there's mm -hmm. the sequence which is the um sequence and then the pair tell me about what is this the sequence that you're referring to in the pair Right. The sequence is always simply referring to the hexagram that comes before. Um, okay. So that's, you know, okay. that's the level so 14, of arithmetic that even yeah, I, so 14 even comes I can before with. 15. Okay. Yeah, we've got it. <laughs> okay. And that matters yes. because this is like book of transition. So preceding it it's, became 14. So now we're at 15. So what does it mean? Yeah. It, um, it tells, it can tell a story. It can show where you're coming from. And sometimes it makes it easier to relate to the hexagram you received. Um, ah. and it helps clarify what it is and what it rests on um, ah. okay so mine says great possession 14 is great possession so it says mm. great possession means being incapable of arrogance and so integrity follows um so does that mean that's where i'm coming that's where i'm coming from and now i'm moving to something else yeah that's that's what your integrity rests on ah, um, okay the fact that you have great possession, which I would say means you have, you're rich in talent and ability and you have a lot going for you. Um, and what follows from this is the picture of integrity and modesty and not being arrogant. And the, the word for arrogant, it actually literally means overfull, something that's overflowing. Um, so it's yeah it's not being not being too full of yourself basically right okay um, and the seat the, and, the se <laughs> and the sequence is saying that if that when you are tr truly talented you can't be too full of yourself got um, it <laughs> which come to think of it from the really really talented people i've known you know, great musicians that does tend to be true they're, right they're lovely oh. they act as if they were utterly unaware of how brilliant they are mm. <laughs> yeah mm. okay and then there's the pair what, what is this appearing mm. with um the in each case an odd numbered hexagram one three five and so on pairs with the even numbered one that follows it yeah. um normally the pair is just the hexagram you started with let me get this the right way up um well, that's that's 15 right turned upside down oh um, i see yeah that's that's it's a grab 16 um oh. that's how the pairs are, that's how the pairs are created normally ah. uh, unless you unless you get a hexagram that's the same upside down in which case they go to its opposite but you have okay. 
Okay, so in my case, it's enthusiasm. Integrity takes itself lightly. Enthusiasm is careless. So what is this pair trying to share with me? Um, it's You can kind of imagine it's like you were handed a, a coin with 15 on one side and 16 on the other. So it's about this integrity enthusiasm um, pair balance between these two things. And it's saying, but look, it's it's this way up. You want it, you want, you want to concentrate on the integrity side of things. Um I integrity, yeah, integrity creates success. The noble one completes it. Um the noble one that's um the learner, it's the kind of person, someone who is imaginative and learning and progressing. It's the kind of person you want to be. They complete it, they get the work done. Um and the feeling of this, yeah, it has to do also with modesty and humility. So it's very much the one gets it done and it's not particularly about you. Mm -hmm. um, it's important not to think of it as humility as in a sort of self-abasement, I am not worthy, um, right. why, why I am not capable, woe is me. Um, because that's, of course, is still all I, 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 me, me, me. Um, and this is, you know, it's just, you know, the work gets gets done um the ability is there to work mm. okay happens, it will be finished so integrity where where is where is six where is 16 um um so yeah hexagram 15 might say um yeah i'm not really worried about uh, about how this turns out for me because i know that what's important is getting done um hexagram 16 might also say i'm not worried about how this turns out they would say because I'm invincible. Um, oh. I, can, I, I can do anything. I'm a superhero. Okay. <laughs> um, 16 is enthousi it's enthusiasm and it's also it's um, imagination and looking forward and envisioning. Um, it's, um, is it I an antonym? Is it like what I don't want to be? <laughs> Um, kind of kind of yes yes i okay. they're, they're two hot they're two halves of a whole but right now it's what you don't want to be <laughs> um, if you've ever made a, if you've ever made a vision board 16 yes. is a very vision board sort of thing it's like here's a picture of what of you know here's a castle i'm building in the air um and that's that's going to happen i'm going to manifest that everything's going that way um 15 is you know not really bothered about what's in the air it's bothered about the rock that's under the ground, the foundations. Um, Interesting. Perfect. What's okay. Go. Solid and down here. <laughs> okay. So then in the rest of their um um in your in your book, you talk about different lines. So we had talked to mm. so there's line one through six, because there's six lines in a hexagram. Mm. And we had talked about line five and line six th that yes. that are changing. And you have a little narrative in here so the line five says not rich in, and so this is from the directly from the oracle so i assume this is like a translation from i'm not yes, sure again, this... again that the part in the the part in italics is is direct from the from the translation yeah is it from the... william reinheim or who is this from this translation um, that's um it's roughly my translation okay um, god i can't really claim to have translated okay it, so got i do it. rest on it i do lean on a lot of other people but yeah that's from okay. the chinese Okay, so not rich in your neighbors, fruitful to use this to invade and conquer, nothing that does not bear fruit. And then line six, the call of integrity, fruitful to use this to mobilize the army and bring order to the city and state. So, hmm. so these are what your book says are in line five and six. Yes, so, this is, so yeah, this, the moving lines are kind of, the, they're the heart of the reading. Um, oh, okay. Yeah this is the core message the most direct answer so what you need to know well it's firstly if you're not rich in your neighbor it's fruitful to use this to invade and conquer and nothing does not bear fruit um there used to be a convention in old china that if one state suffered famine its neighbors should help it and if they didn't it would be okay to invade but this doesn't just say, you know, if you're hungry, it says if you're not rich in your neighbor, if you're not finding actively finding abundance and richness in your surroundings, um, then it's good to go further, um, to go out and go get it. If what's nearby, if what's nearby is not big and rich and fulfilling, then go forth and conquer something new. 
Mm. Um, so it's about wanting to live to your full potential and find challenges and growth and yeah, not just making do, this is okay. I can settle for this, it's mm. all right. Mm -hmm. mm. Which is interesting in, you know, at the fifth line of a hexagram that's about modesty and about, you know, not making a big deal of things. But I think it helps to think of it as authenticity doing mm. all your work the noble one completes it the noble one doesn't stop halfway and say yeah whatever i suppose that'll do um no one's going to do it all um and this is also in the context of hexagram 53 which we haven't talked about enough which is about yeah. um um it's about the woman who marries and the good fortune of this and when a woman married she came she traveled to her husband's home so it's about you coming to a place which you will make your home right so this is um, 53 that's what the yes. hexagram looks like and the mm. the description the shorthand description is gradual progress in your book yes okay got so tell yeah. me a little bit about so we've 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 done an interpretation of 15 um and what it means and the, looking at the heart of it the lines five and six um, and now we move over to 53, which is the other. Okay, we haven't looked at five lines six yet. <laughs> oh, we haven't, sorry. No. Okay. <laughs> please, I thought we did, but please tell me more. So mm. tell me more about myself because I'm so humble. All right, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's the spirit. <laughs> okay, so, so what is this, the line six is line call six, of integrity. Line six, set. Yeah. Line six the, the call of integrity, fruitful to use this to mobilize the army and bring order to city and state which is another remarkably active, assertive sounding line, um, making it clear that this is not about self-abnegation. Um, the call of integrity, that's a fascinating word. It actually means the call as in the call of a bird or an animal that enables you to recognize them. Mm. You know, the, dis the distinctive call of a blackbird or robin, you should be able to say, oh yeah, that's a blackbird, that's a robin. Um, so it's the sound of your authenticity. It's the sound you make that's recognizable as you, mm -hmm. which is an interesting answer for someone mm. who started out with a radio show. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's your, your voice, your identity sings out. Mm. Um, mm. It makes me wonder, actually, I'm, you're doing an interview show. Um, mm -hmm. You're putting me in the foreground and yourself kind of in the background your your mountain is under the ground um i wonder if there's more of your voice that needs to that could be heard there could be some solo shows <laughs> yeah um so yes and the, and this sound this of your voice kind of sets everything else in motion has this galvanizing effect mm. it's fruitful to use this to mobilize an army and bring order to city and state um, it's an image of being like a warrior and a leader and making things happen. It's, um, it's not sort of, sort of military state um, in introducing discipline necessarily. I think originally the idea was um, we're going to go into areas where there is um, chaos and brigands and robbers and people can't just have an ordinary get on with their lives in an ordinary way and we're going to create a world where they can grow their crops make offerings to the spirits have rich lives in peace it's so it's, think of it as bringing harmony mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so yeah and since this is hexagram 15 you think first about your own realm and your sphere your corner of the world to change um and since it's looking towards hexagram 53 um, you think again about finding, about coming home and finding your home, but yeah, it's not just about going to something that exists and fitting in, it's about creating it. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yes, and if we, if we do look at 53, actually, the, um, the trigram picture there might be, very, might be a very interesting one to look at. Mm -hmm. um, because in hexagram 15, you have mountain below um, and earth above. Mm -hmm. And and whereas in 53, you have mountain below and wind or wood 
above and the mm. way this is imagined in the the the, way the authors of the image imagined this is as a tree growing on the mountain mm. um, on the mountain is a tree it says gradual progress a noble one avide, abides in virtuous character and improves the ordinary um so again you know it's you use your use your imagination I mean, the great thing to do with trigrams is to is to paint a mental picture with them so now and now we have a tr now those lines have changed you have a tree growing in the rock with its roots mm. going down into the bedrock it's not going to shoot up um you know it's not it's not like a seedling in friendly compost it's going to take it's going to be slow slow growing mm. um but gradually gradually it will create it'll create a little microclimate on the side of that mountain won't mm. it mm -hmm. um there will be shade there'll be creatures living there there'll be plants growing around it and so on it, it will create its own little atmosphere and habitat um which i think is also what you're doing um and continuing to do um you know you you keep growing in the space you you create the home you create keeps changing mm -hmm. and developing Mm -hmm. And then the again, there's a sequence. So what precedes this, and then the pair. Um, and in this context, you had said that this is um, how if the first one is where I'm kind of at my start, my home, my origin point of where I am, and then the second one is kind of where I'm. Again, tell me about what the second hexagram means. Sorry. Um, no, no. I mean, it it varies between readings what it means. It, okay. Um, so I it get I get quite hand wavy and impressionistic about this. I think <laughs> this one is, I think this one is talking about um, what it's about for you and um, and yeah, it's it's setting it in a larger context. And it it what really helps is to put the two hexagrams together. Um, so you need to know something about integrity and its gradual progress, how it pro how it develops gradually, how it grows, how it creates, how it comes home and how it creates this home, mm. how it creates this habitat. Mm. And then when you look at the lines, it turns out that how integrity and authenticity actually create a habitat is in this, this quite fierce way, conquering new realms and... Uh, and mobilizing the army to create a harmonious space. Um, I get it. So you don't it's read really the quite lines. dynamic. So you don't really read in this case, I'm not reading lines five and six, which I was doing erroneously for before. Um, so in, like for 53, I'm not reading no, lines no, five and no, six. No, you it's, don't. No. Yeah, it's really just the first hexagram that you're reading those lines with because that's mm -hmm. actually what's changing and and I think I get now this old yin to yang because this moves from like a yin to like when I'm thinking about the words that you use to describe lines five and six they're very kind of yang go out there active kind of energetic those two are aren't they yes yes yeah. the whole thing yeah. has kind yeah. of a yang kind of vibe to it but then it's it's interesting because it has a yang and yin kind of yang go out there and get there but be slow and be humble so it feels very balanced um mm -hmm. from my perspective when i listen to it so um let's say we do this reading we've read right through your book you know and so and so what's confusing to me so i i then thought well what are the words that they used here in this book you know this and so what's interesting mm -hmm. is there's a different word you know, this gentleman who wrote it, this is Alfred Hung, um, he mm -hmm. says humbleness, okay, as mm -hmm. the word for 15. Yeah, and then the other one is eliminating, which has um, like... Oh, it's, it's not eliminating. Sorry, 53. Sorry, I'm wrong. looking at the wrong 53. one. 53, yeah. 53, <laughs> yeah. thank goodness. Yes, there are um, some differences in translation, but not that much. Developing gradually is yeah. the translation. And so... When I look at these, it's really, um, and I don't know if you do the same thing, but when I was looking at them, I was trying to get a sense of like, what could, what are all the different interpretations, much like in your community, where you're referring mm -hmm. to other people's interpretations. Um, 
is that what you do too? Or is it because you have a, you have a long friendship? You're like, I don't have to talk to other people. I can just talk to my best friend, I Ching. Yeah, I, you know, mostly I just go to, you know, what it says, which is, you know, I'm typically, it's just a, just a very few characters. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, sometimes I will pick up someone else's book and read what they think because, you know, it's, it's important for me not to get stuck in a rut of thinking, yeah, I know what that one means. Right. Um, Cause then I end up cons consulting what I think it means and not what it says. Um, for a relative newcomer, it's important to, as I say, look at the actual translation um, and take everything else kind of with a pinch of salt because that's what someone else thinks it means. Right. Um, which might be very relevant and helpful or you know or it might not um but it's, it's I've, been, I've been anyway. doing this just because in preparation for the show with you i've been doing this fairly often and asking questions like um should i do this or that and i thought i didn't have enough time and so i was just waiting for my husband in the car in between appointments and i was just like i did the eching on the online thing and i was like should I do this work that I'm thinking about in diversity, equity, inclusion? Like shake, 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 shake. I'm like, no, oh, that's interesting. Okay, it says no. <laughs> you know, just, like, I, could, I could just look at it and feel like, no, nope, says no. And, you know, I, I read through the, I skimmed through the background and I thought, okay. And, and what was interesting is, um, I, I tuned into it and, and I think it was a no that was already informed internally by a no, because I couldn't jump quickly to a no, unless there was a part of me that was saying no already. And I was just looking for another validation that it was a no. And so it was interesting, just the process, right? Now, there, there have been times when I look, Mike, I'm not sure what this means, you know, and I'll, I'll contemplate it more deeply. I mean, do you find that with yourself as well? Like you were talked about, you may ask questions um, like, should I get the software on sale right now or not? Um, mm -hmm. Which is kind of like, you know, I, perhaps you contemplate a week for it, but perhaps the sale is over by the time you contemplate it for a week. And then during yeah. the week, you may ask the question of, what do I need to know? And so in that one that is more contemplative, I mean, how, how does your interpretation vary based on the question that you've asked? Um, has the interpretation vary based on the question? I don't think it does really. I, sorry, I'm not quite sure what you mean. Yeah, okay, so how, how, how in depth do you spend time thinking about oh. it? Oh well, I mean, with um, I with what what if I what if I buy this software? You know, it's it's this it's this great offer, and I never thought about needing such a thing. But now I can suddenly imagine all these ways I could use it, um, and I could you know I could just see how amazing this is going to be. And it's going away, you know, because of right. course it's limited time. And it's pressing all it's pressing all my buttons, um, and I might cast a reading, and I might get hexagram sixteen, which we were just talking about, because which. I had that several times when I was asking that kind of, um, you know, what if I get, what if I get this amazing thing that's going to transform everything? Um, and by now, by now we were talking about the sort of, sort of personal associations. By now I know that that is the Oracle's way of saying, yeah, yeah, you're imagining quite a lot there, aren't you? Aren't you, aren't you getting keen? Um, <laughs> what a wonderful castle you've built in the air there. Any any foundations, any chance of me. Um, so, you know, how, and how long would I spend looking at that? Not very. Um, you know, close the browser tab with the sale in it, go and do something else. And that would right. be the end of it. Um, if I've got a reading for the week, I'll look at it at the beginning of the week and remember it and mull it over during the week and come back to it at the end. Um, if I've got a, a big question you know, about, um, and for me, the big ones are often about how to tackle something in a relationship or something. Mm -hmm. um, then, um, you know, I will. I mean, I, I always want to to 
sleep on it at least i want to spend time with it read what it says mull it over ask myself um simple dumb sort of questions about it mm -hmm. um you know i'm with your reading i sat and asked myself you know, if there were a gradual progress kind of aspect to integrity um you know what could that be mm. um what happens you know what happens when i put these two together and then i think the most lovely thing you get from putting those two together is the trigram pictures um first of how you have this mountain under the earth mm -hmm. um and then of how a tree can grow into that can put its roots down into that bedrock and, and grow mm. um, um yeah so it, thinking about <laughs> conceptually about those mm. what in nature can you relate to yeah and pa have. painting painting mental pictures um and connecting with it imaginatively and that there are pictures in the trigrams there are often pictures in the text um i mean there are there are pictures there's the, there's the image of you of you having your own call like a bird has a call um, um so and yeah i'm spending time with these and you know not not being in a big hurry to go and collect a set of abstractions and say you know um mountain represents let's see we've got a list we've got stillness and calm and stopping and obstruction and blood you know and then should in the upper trigram that represents influence and growth and gradual and yeah and um you know not you know let's uh go back instead to uh thinking about a tree growing on a mountain mm. because I, and that's how oracles actually speak to us with pictures that and it's what we're wired for to connect to that kind of thing and mm. The Yi is full of little vignettes, little stories. You know, um, there's a line that says, that's, that's the most recent edition of it, which is less beautiful, but more portable. Um, it, you know, it doesn't have the pictures. It just looks like a sort of ordinary book. Thank you so much for being here.